So, uh, you know, in the past, we've had what I call sort of this donut hole problem where we talk about the, the fancy new tools and it also have a very beginner oriented tutorial and everything in the beginning would kind of fall into uh, what I would think of a donut hole, maybe what our, our DES friends would, would call a, a, a black hole. So uh, instead we thought that we'd give a series of talks and sort of quickly be a survey over everything. And I know it's gonna go a little fast, uh, but that's okay. The idea here is to plant seeds that, that you can uh, remember and maybe Google later, even if you don't get uh, the whole gestalt of, of, of everything. So uh, if you do want the, the whole uh, beginner's talk, uh, it's on YouTube here. So this one's gonna be a, a fast paced, sort of high throughput kind of talk. Uh, covering all the tools, or as I like to say it, every, and don't uh, ignore that asterisk and what it might mean there. So every Condor tool uh, in 30 minutes. And as I was looking through this, I found that um, there's about 60 Condor tools. So hang on to your seats, uh, but they do fall into several categories. So I'm not gonna walk through all these categories here, but there's kind of a, an organization here and, and we'll go through in that order. So the first sort of commands that I want to talk about are, are commands for managing jobs. Now, uh, I'm glad Marone's not here, but if you had to learn one command or if you had to teach someone one command and you only got one command about Condor, what do you think that would be? Oh, I love it. Uh, absolutely not planned for, planted at all. So Condor submit, hopefully everyone knows what Condor submit does, it looks a bit like this. And uh, what actually goes on behind the hood is the Condor submit tool talks to the uh, SCEDB and gets back a, uh, a class ad, the counter submit language, what TJ called the, the JCL, for those of you who um, know what IBM is, will we'll translate the, uh, the submit file language into, into class ads and send that off to the SCEDB. Now, sometimes you might wanna know, well, what exactly does that, that uh, class ad look like? Or maybe more to the point, what does this translation look like when we go from the submit language to the class ad language, because as TJ showed, there can be variable, there can be expansion, there can be kind of kind of a bunch of things going on there. It's not necessarily a one-to-one -one and onto translation between submit and class ads, even though it, it kind of looks like that. So to do that, you can use the dry run command. Um, the dry run is a very handy command. You're trying to debug what exactly you did wrong in your submit file. And it's just a dry run and it takes the name of an output file if you uh, are a Mountain Dew drinking Linux hacker, you might want to give dev standard out as your file name. And you'll get an output like this, uh, this of course shortens a bit on the screen. Uh, so I think the dry run is a very handy thing to do and probably not often uh, as used as it could be by administrators who are debugging things. As someone asked earlier, another common thing that I think is not used as often as, as it could be is Connor Smith dash I, I for interactive. Um, and that will give you uh, an interactive shell on some random machine in your pool. If you don't want some random machine, if you want some specific machine, you could also pass it a submit file that has requirements and file transfer and all that stuff in it. And this is, uh, again, a super handy command for debugging what might happen if your job fails on a worker node but doesn't fail when run uh, by hand or locally. Yet another Condor submit command line option that I think few people know about is batch name. Who here has used batch name? TJ, put your hand down. Who here who doesn't work on my floor has used batch name? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Um, a lot of times, hopefully, the whole idea behind high throughput is that we're submitting more than one job. Uh, and these jobs are all, you know, working together on something. And, and batch name can give a name to a, a bunch of jobs, maybe not all submitted at the same time. And if you do batch name, it shows up in the Connor Q output with this name. You know, this is test tube seven that I'm working on. So that's yet another Condor submit option. Um, by default, when you um, have file transfer on, the file transfers are transferred when the job starts from wherever you specified them. Maybe, maybe those draw those those input files are being edited, maybe by you, maybe by forces uh, antagonistic towards you. So you might want to submit the files, the input files as they exist at submit time, not at job start time. And that's what condor submit dash school does. A related command to condor submit dash school is 
Connor Smith can also talk to a remote SCED deed, given that you have um, given that you have access to write to that. And remote implies spool. And when spool is on, either direct or via remote, um, what happens when the job exits? Does anyone know? You did a remote command. You the the input files were sent from your laptop, maybe to the where the SCED is running. Your output files come back. There's no path to get it back to your laptop. So where do the files go? Where do the files go? What's that? The spool directory, that's right. If you do a spooled submit, either remote or via spool, they end up in the SCED where they hang out for a while until you pick them up with the Condor transfer data command, which will take the files out of spool and the, the sandbox out of spool and put them into your current directory. Now there's about a million options uh, as TJ didn't even get a chance to cover in, in 25 minutes. So look at the, the Condor manual uh, under the submit man page for uh, all the options that Condor submit because I'm sure not gonna cover them all. A few one-liners though. Uh, we talked about the Condor submit submit file. Doesn't have to come from a file. It can read from standard in. This can be very handy if you uh, are writing a Condor submit wrapper script as I've heard I think three people do today. And you don't even have to read from standard input. You can pass the arguments uh, along on the command line like that. Now, right about now, I know what you're thinking. Is this the talk that should be titled every Condor tool in 30 minutes? Because I'm like halfway in and I've covered one tool. Or is it every Condor tool in 30 minutes each? Not to worry, Condor Smith's a tricky one. We're gonna go a little faster from here on out. Condor Smith DAG uh, is how you submit DAGs. That's Cole's favorite command. Uh, you know, don't make the mistake that I make every single time. Condor Smith only takes single job submit files or single cluster submit files. If you wanna submit a DAG, you have to use Condor Smith DAG. Condor Smith will not submit a DAG. Condor Smith DAG will not submit a submit file. Perhaps it should. There's only one command uh, option of, our, of, of interest to Condor Submit DAG, and that's force. So if you're resubmitting a DAG, you don't want to restart, make sure to use the force command. <laughs> that's no submit. Ah, uh, I, I only got 25 minutes here. So uh, we said that if you know, we all agreed that if you know one command, it should be Condor Submit. If you only know two commands, what should the second command be? I, I will give you a hint. Marone would say I have the order backwards. <laughs> Not much to say about condor remove. Like most of the options in condor remove, uh, the explicit job with cluster.proc, you can remove all the procs in a cluster or all of your, all your jobs with uh, condor username or someone else's if you have um, the appropriate uh, permissions. Like many tools, condor remove takes a constraint or dash const where you can give it a class add expression, which will only remove those. This is very powerful. If you're an administrator and want to make that step up from beginning administrator to uh, intermediate, inter <laughs> intermediate uh, administrator, I suggest you learn how to do this. It's very um, powerful. Um, and let's say you uh, want to make that step up and you're not quite sure that you got the expression right, like me. Um, using counter Q with that same expression will give you some confidence that, that you're getting the right jobs. Counter Q will show you what jobs match that expression so you can be sure. Uh, one option to Condor RM that I think isn't used often enough that should probably always be used um, is the reason option. How many here have removed someone else's jobs? Uh, intentionally, intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, there is an option to Condor RM dash reason, which puts an attribute into the job in, that goes into the history file with this string in it. I strongly encourage you to always use it because you're gonna forget why you removed the job or you wanna give some notice to the user that they were misbehaving. Please always use uh, a reason for, for Condor RM. It will save you hours of, of headache later, I can assure you. Now, uh, all of the act on job commands uh, that we're gonna cover have these same kind of options. So I won't go into them in details. You can remove or act on on them uh, with these same kind of uh, constraints. Now there's uh, seven more uh, sort of act on job commands, 
but they all kind of cluster together. There's, there's three sets of twins um, and the oddball. So let's start with the first set of twins. Uh, counter suspend and resume. This isn't used as often as you know, other commands, but when you need it, you really need it. When counter suspend is run, a formerly running job is suspended. This means it's stopped. Like you hit it with SIG stop or control Z. Um, it's still on the machine. It's still accumulating Condor usage, but it's not running. It's not accumulating any CPU or network usage. Sometimes in an emergency, admins find this very useful. For example, hypothetically speaking, if your institution switches on and off chilled water twice a year and your cooling completely fails, you may want to very quickly and very effectively reduce the power that your cluster uses. You could counter suspend all the jobs in your cluster for maybe a short period of time. Your power usage would go down substantially. And when hopefully in a few minutes, no, maybe a longer time, uh, the power is restored, you could um, kind of resume uh, everything and have them running back again. So that's the first of our twins. Uh, the second are twins, which I think are, are used more often, are Condor hold and release. Unlike suspend and resume, when a job, formerly running job is held, it's evicted and removed from the EP uh, and placed in a held state uh, where it can't be restarted until such time as you run Condor release. Uh, again, these take the same options as, as always. And just like Condor RM, um, it takes a reason. And again, I would very strongly encourage admins to always use the dash reason option when you put someone else's jobs on hold. Even if you're putting your own jobs on hold, if you have the memory of a Greg, um, you'll want to use this reason to remind you why you did this. So the third of our twins is Condor Q. And hopefully everyone here has used that. Again, it takes the same kind of options uh, and, and some more that uh, our, our three sets of twins do. And one of the more uh, interesting and I think fun options of Condor Q is uh, dash better, which stands for better analyze, which does some sort of um, simulation on your job and all the machines, all the slots in the pool to determine why your job doesn't match. So if you have a job that's idle and you think it's idle because it's not matching, Condor Q dash better may be the first place to go. Another thing people don't know about is Condor Q can also be used to query remote schedules with the dash name uh, option for schedules that are in your pool or dash name dash pool for uh, schedules that are in some other pool. Again, assuming that you have permission to do so. Uh, Condor Q can also read from a file if you have a job add in the file, which might be handy uh, if you ran the dash dry run option. Um, or even better yet, uh, let's say you really want to run Condor Q dash better to, to figure out why something isn't matching, but you want to know why isn't it matching this one slot? I got a pretty good idea in my head that this job should match this slot. So uh, if you generate a job add file, uh, maybe with counter Q-L or dry run or something, and a slot add file with counter status, this can tell you, you can constrain counter Q-better uh, to only match this job and this slot. And even better, you can then edit the job or the slot file to figure out, well, if I change this, would it match? Or why isn't it matching? So this is a very powerful tool. And for you advanced administrators whose users come to you and say, why isn't my job matching? I strongly recommend this. And of course, a corollary to Condor Q is Condor Watch Q. We've talked about this twice before, so I'm not gonna, not gonna cover that. Um, and finally, in the Condor Q family, there's Condor Q Edit, which can make changes to a job that has already been submitted. Now, a interesting thing about Condor Q Edit is it only makes changes in the SCEDDs copy of the ad. Once the job is running, that, that doesn't propagate onto, onto the EP. Now, quoting is tricky. Remember, we've got both shell and class ad quoting. So you notice in the first one here, we have single quotes and double quotes. One way to get around that, again, a, an uncommonly used option that probably should use more, is Connor Q dash edit or edits, which takes a file. So you get around the shell quoting. Notice you still need the, the class ad quoting. So be careful here. That's what I want to say about Condor Q and its pair Condor History. Does anyone know what a problem, maybe the biggest problem with Condor History is? Don't worry, I'll wait. And wait, and wait. That's right, Condor History can be slow. And it's slow for two reasons. One, there's rather a lot of information about each job in the history file. And two, there are usually an enormous number of jobs. So 
To solve the second problem first, we can say dash match one, say, oh, only match the first job. So once, once you hit it, it doesn't go all the way through searching all the thousands or 10,000, whatever many jobs there might be. Um, or, you know, kind of history takes it forwards and backwards. So if you have a pretty good idea that your job was in the first part or the last part of the history file, this can help you speed up a bit. Now, another trick is counter history takes a user log object, which we now call the event log. Um, and this solves both problems at the same time because the event log usually only has events for your jobs, not everyone. And it has fewer attributes um, for, each, uh, for each job, which means you may not get the full, attribute, full set of things you're interested in, but it will go a gazillion times faster. Uh, counter user log, my new favorite tool, does a similar kind of thing. But the real solution to slow history is anyone? use a real database. And the counter add stash tool, which I think Jason talked about earlier, uh, can copy a history file um, or the job ads in a history file into uh, Elasticsearch where you can use a real, if clunky, uh, JSON query mechanism. And if you're running a large pool, you're doing lots of queries, we strongly recommend uh, doing this sort of thing. So that's our first category of commands. Uh, any questions? Andrew. Yeah, with the uh, user log file, uh, yep. you said it takes the job log. So that's, you know, the in your submit file log equals something.log. That's what you're referring to? Yes. So yeah, that's the log, the log equals something, or it could also be the global event log, or it could also be the one that Dagman creates in the nodes.log file. Yeah, James. Yeah, I had either forgotten or didn't know about Condor transfer data. Does that show you the location of checkpoint data in the school for still running jobs? I don't think so, but I'd have to check. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, okay, so moving on, uh, let's talk about commands that work on uh, already already running jobs, and when I say already running, um, in most universes, in print movies don't work generally on, on the grid ones. We've got counter SSH to job, which is a fantastic command when it works. Um, there is no end of magic required for this tool to work, so occasionally it doesn't work. And it is the basis of counter submit dash i. There's a bunch of really interesting options to counter SSH to job, including dash x to propagate the x protocol. So if you're using like the MATLAB toolbox, that will work. Pretty cool. Um, and because counter SSH job sits on top of SSH, all of the SSH options uh, can be passed via the dash SSH. So if you really want to show off, uh, we can do SCP to job on top of counter SSH to job. And I'm not going to ask you to memorize this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the light bulb just went on over at Moat's head. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to memorize this, this syntax. The, the slides will be up. Um, and rsync will work too in this way. Um, those are maybe a little bit tricky, a little bit um, esoteric, a little bit moat worthy. Um, a simpler way might be condor tail. Condor tail takes a job ID and copies the last k byte of data from standard output um, or standard error if you give the dash standard error option or some random file. A lot of people don't know about this. This works generally everywhere. And this is a very good way to get a peek into my job's been running for an hour. Huh? It's over there. How's it doing? Counter tail, very handy for seeing, getting, getting kind of the well, what's going on on my job. Similar to counter um, transfer data is counter evicted files. This is very handy for James checkpoints files. So given uh, the list command and a job ID, it will list all the files that are stored in the school directory. Um, this allows for inspection, infection, in, inspection and fetching of files. Uh, and it also works with checkpoints. So that's very handy. Uh, if you want to generate uh, one of those, you could counter vacate your job, which will take a running job and evict it. Uh, it won't hold it, it will evict it, send it back to the idle state. Maybe you know that your job is on a machine that is in trouble and you want to get it off. Counter vacate job, very handy. Uh, the next command that works on running jobs is chirp. Uh, and chirp is the only command that must run inside the job and on the EP. Um, we also have nice Python bindings. So if you are a kind of person who argues about what Pythonic means, we can run chirp commands from pure Python. These commands run on the EP when the job is running. 
And there are many subcommands of chirp, but the most important ones include getting job add attributes from the AP, very handy, and setting job add attributes. So you can use the, um, the job add as kind of like a, a, a blackboard, if you will. Just like with counter QEdit, be careful with quoting because when you're using the shell versions of these, we got shell quoting going on and uh, class add. There's also a chirp command to append to the user log. Again, super handy for debugging. So if you've got a job that takes, I don't know, 100 hours, uh, maybe you want to U-log something, I've made it 10%, I've made it 20%, and you can get kind of a better feeling for what's going on. Then there's counter wait, which blocks until, uh, it reads, reads an event file and blocks until uh, that job exits or maybe all the jobs in the event file. This is usually used for big, uh, building up bigger scripts um, and doing, doing things like that. So that's it for commands running on, commands for jobs that are running. Our next set is commands for EPs and other counter services. Um, maybe this is the most important command you should know, um, counter off. Um, counter off can take the name of the daemon to, to turn off or turns off uh, everyone with counter off except the master. If you really want everything and lose our point of presence, the counter master, you need to explicitly ask for the counter off dash master. Of course, we've got the, uh, the dual of that, counter on, same thing applies there. Uh, again, because counter on talks to the master, it doesn't actually start the master. Uh, and there's no way to do that other than to uh, either tell systemd to do it or your service manager or, or to run, manager, run it yourself. Now, if you're doing counter off and on, a lot of times maybe you really want Condor restart. Uh, again, a very handy admin command for those of you who know what you're doing. Now, um, a very useful command, once you have pslots enabled, is Condor drain. Who here uses Condor drain? Outstanding. Who here uses Condor drain by hand? Yeah, that's sort of unfortunate. We'd like to get to a point where we're, we're doing this automatically, but until such time, uh, Condor drain will tell a machine not to accept any more new jobs um, until such time as you, you cancel it with a cancel command or, or, it, uh, or, or it restarts. Uh, we've recently added a Condor now command, uh, again, for running immediately replacing uh, a running job and machine with what you might think is a higher priority job. Um, and just like there's Condor vacate job, which takes a job ID, there's also Condor vacate, which takes the name of a machine, which tells uh, Condor to immediately evict all the jobs on that machine. Um, and all the jobs, they don't get held, they, they go to idle to run somewhere else. Maybe you might want to do this if you're shutting down the machine or if you know it's bad or if you're just generally having a bad day and you, know, you need to shut down the machine. What is Condor known for? Knobs. Oh, we got knobs. Um, we've all seen how to use Condor config val, I think. Condor config val can take the name of a knob and it'll tell you its value. Um, a subcommand of Condor config val I think not a lot of people know about is dash summary. Um, and this will print out a diff of all the config knobs that you have changed that are different from the default. Very, very handy. Who here has used Condor config? Who here who doesn't work on my floor has used Condor config val dash summary? Yeah, next year I want to see more hands up because this is incredibly useful. Incredibly useful. Um, we also have dash verbose which will tell you a little bit of a help string or the, the, the line number that that config knob is set on. And of course, once you change knobs, Condor reconfig is super handy for, uh, Condor reconfig will tell Condor to uh, reread its config file. A lot of our knobs sort of depend on each other and we don't want Condor to, in general, see a change to a knob immediately. We kind of want a transaction, if you will. Um, and Kind of reconfig will do that. Kind of status we should all know about. Um, who here does this a lot? Please don't. Um, one, um, it like usually works. Um, did you get the regular expression right? Are you sure? Did you anchor it? Oh, you didn't anchor it. Yeah, right. Did you remember the, the class ads are case insensitive? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it can be slow. So 
So rather, we encourage you to run something like this, uh, which will only show that one attribute, um, and it evaluates uh, by default, which may or may not be what you want. Um, and usually for literals, just a, a naked AF uh, is, is, is good enough. But there are a colon R and colon LR options to give the quoted and the, and the full sort of dash L format. Now, counter status isn't just for ads um, or slot ads. Uh, there's also uh, all the metadata about submitters and SCEDVs uh, and the master, uh, which can be uh, queried from the collector with counter status. So moving on, we've got commands for debugging and testing the services proper. Um, probably the command that has the least amount of problems, Condor version. Pretty straightforward. We could do better even with this. Um, another command for debugging, which is super useful, is the class add eval commands. The class add now, those of you who drink too much Mountain Dew probably write very elaborate class add expressions which means they needed to be debugged. And class add eval is a command line tool where you give it a class add and an expression and it evaluates that expression in the context of that class add. This is super helpful if you're someone like me who can never remember if the regular expression function is spelled with a P or not. Is it regex or regeps? I can never remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that, that, that's my next problem. Um, the counter who command will show you what's running on your EP. Again, I think this is a very underutilized command. Counter who, uh, you run it on your EP and it'll show you all the jobs that it knows about, their job IDs, how long they've been running, and their PID, not that you should ever kill them. More than more of an advanced command is counter top. Um, we may, I wouldn't recommend that you run this yourself. Uh, we might ask you to run counter top and send us the output of this incredibly uh, esoteric, confusing output. It's like top, but it prints out Condor internal function names. And uh, we don't really expect people to understand it, but just, just know that it's there in case uh, something is misbehaving. Um, Condor debug logs can be fetched remotely with Condor fetch log. And Condor uh, transforms, schedule transforms, can be debugged with the Condor transform add rule. Anyone know what a SCEDI transform is? Yeah, we have a whole talk on that subject. And then there are three commands to query aspects of the machine. Counter starter dash class add is what the, the start view runs on startup. Uh, and it'll print out attributes of the machine, like whether or not we've got um, certain uh, counter features. Uh, if we talked about this earlier, the counter GPU discovery, uh, if you pass the dash extra flag, we'll give you a little bit more information about what counter thinks it knows about the GPUs, which may or may not be what you think Connor should know about GPUs. Same with power savings uh, for those of you that the, the green computing stuff. Moving on, we have just a couple of commands for submitters. Uh, my favorite command, Condor user prio, uh, will tell you about the pool-wide priorities and the pool-wide total usage of all your submitters since the beginning of time, where at the beginning of time is when your negotiators start running. This is very, very handy. And we've got a whole talk about those, which I won't uh, go into here, but if you're really curious about how to set priorities and fair share and unfair share and group quotas, that's a great talk. Um, recently, we added a ceiling option um, for each submitter. So you can say, well, independent of fair share, I want this user to use no more than say 100 cores. So uh, people find this very helpful for onboarding users. They're brand new users. We you know, trust but verify. We'll start them out with a low ceiling. They can prove to us they know what they're doing and then we can raise their ceiling later. Counter user prio can do that. And if we have a ceiling, shouldn't we have a floor? So in the last series, we've added a floor, which is again, the, the corollary of ceiling, which means that Condor, again, despite what your priority is, will try to ensure that each user gets at least that many cores by giving a preliminary round where everyone gets up to their floor. Obviously not a hard guarantee, it's best effort, but first Condor tries to get everyone up to their floor and then it does the fair share. One of our newest commands that may not be in a counter version if you have is counter queue users, 
which has this great uh, ability to prevent some, oh, is that a typo? <laughs> this may not be installed on the Skeddy that Todd is running, um, which gives you the ability, gives the administrator the ability to prevent some arbitrary user from submitting commands. And with no options, it'll show the, um, the usage uh, since the beginning of time, where the beginning of time is the start of Skeddy. Um, and also there's a corresponding enable. So you could also do uh, dash enable to I, I don't know why you ever want to do that. Finally, there's one new command, our one ring, our one command to rule them all. Uh, and this is a bit experimental. Uh, we call it the htconder CLI or the noun verb tool, because like uh, the, all the new hotness, Kubernetes or Docker or, or, um, or what have you, uh, it, it's one command that wraps all the functionality into a, a two level hierarchy. The first is the noun, the second is the verb. Uh, this is a fresh start, so it's written in Python. As TJ, I think, said earlier, uh, you can look at the Python and make snide comments about how Pythonic or not. Um, it is extensible, so you can add new uh, nouns, which might be interesting. And we're really looking for feedback on this. Um, so this is kind of a new tool. We think it's the right way to go. It's a way for us to move forward without worrying about backward compatibility. And that is all the Condor tools in 30 minutes or less. <laughs>